How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here today looking at some Nintendo prototypes. These were Nintendo games that were never released for the NES, uh, and we have them right here. 16 of them we're going to cover in this video. Now, trust me, there's a lot more than 16 unreleased Nintendo games out there, but I'm only going to showcase 16 of them in this video. And if I miss out on any of them, make sure you call me out in the comments, because I want to check out some other unreleased Nintendo games, too. And to help me with that, from Bitmap Books, we have the games that weren't. This book is a beast. Look how thick this thing is. Good lord. The Games That Weren't covers 1975 to 2015, uh, includes games, uh, arcade games, computer games, console games, mobile platforms. We're talking about not just NES, but computer games, uh, even things for the Virtual Boy, and so much more. The history behind them, what's going on, even photos of the games, and hey, these games never came out officially. Um, sometimes they leak through the internet and all that, and we're able to check them out that way, and that's how I'm playing these games today. However, with so much video game history, it's interesting to see what didn't quite make the cut for one reason or another. I love books like this and you can grab your very own copy using the link in the description below. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that, just want to let you know where I found this one. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you're subscribed. I'm on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Can I get there sooner than later? What I do, I'm releasing a Nintendo homebrew. I'm going to put someone as the starring character and it could be you. Make sure you're subscribed for your first chance to win. Starting off with The Adventures of Dr. Franken. Now there was a Frankenstein game made by Bandai. This is not that one. There is also The Adventures of Dr. Franken for the Game Boy, as well as the Super Nintendo. However, there was a Nintendo game slated to come out, didn't for one reason or another. However, we are able to play this game today to see what it would have been like. And, I mean, it plays okay for a Nintendo game. This would have been a great rental more than anything. I could have seen me renting this one at least once or twice. Uh, but The Adventures of Dr. Franken, a game that hey, came out for other platforms, but not the NES officially. So it gives you a chance to check out to see what we could have got. Bioforce Ape was a game I was really interested in. I remember seeing photos of this in magazines, never came out, but fortunately the prototype was found and then the ROM was dumped, so it gives us all a chance to play uh, this incredibly weird, <laughs> kind of crazy game as you play as this kind of mutant ape uh, wrestler. Um, <laughs> and this game moves very fast. You move very quickly in this game yourself. Uh, I don't know if that's intentional. Um, I have to assume it was, uh, but this game... I don't know, there's something about it. I, 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 it's funny, I almost wish it was a little bit slower. I guess I could slow down the emulation, but then that wouldn't be the same either. So, playing it like it is, playing it like this, hey, gotta give it props, I do love wrestlers, and the fact that you can, like, you know, give these enemies, like, suplexes and stuff like that, uh, <laughs> pretty fun. But I remember seeing this in magazines and happy to see that it's available. Well, the California Raisins was a game I was interested in because it had Capcom's name on it. However, it just happened to be with Capcom's help and does not play like most other Capcom games when you actually do get around to uh, looking at this game or playing it for yourself. Interesting enough, you play as a California Raisin. It was the California... If you're not from the day, the California Raisins were the advertising marketing thing. Uh, for the California Raisin Company. It would be like if they had a Jolly Green Giant game where you play as the Jolly Green Giant. I'm surprised they haven't. For the Atari, there was a Kool-Aid game. Well, here we have a game with the California Raisins. Guess it makes sense it's from Capcom. They also had the Yo-Noid game with the, the Noid being the mascot for Domino's at the time. I mean, I mean, it's kind of interesting to say the least, but interesting to see that there was a California Raisins game. Now this is a unique one. This is Mindscape's Days of Thunder. And if you're thinking, hey, we already had a Days of Thunder game for the NES. Well, you're right. And this is a different version of the game completely. Uh, this is the one that didn't get produced, the other one did. I think I actually prefer this one over the other one. Now I did an entire video just on this game not too long ago, so you can check that out if you'd like. Uh, but it plays like an interesting kind of racing game where you have to qualify first and then the racing itself is this kind of like chibi car <laughs> side-scrolling um, interesting way to do it. The pit stop's pretty fun too, uh, but there is a different, it's cool to see that there was a different Days of Thunder game. Well, the game's called Drax Night Out, and it's featuring the Reebok Pump. You talk about a uh, sponsorship there. <laughs> hey, you know what? I had a pair of Reebok Pumps back in the day, so I'm okay playing this. Doesn't play all that great. Um, you have a jump button, which barely makes you jump, and then you have a kind of hypnotize button, which will stun the characters so you can walk through them really quickly just to get past them. And there is a Reebok Pump in this game, which will make you run faster, jump higher. It's <laughs> product placement at its best, or maybe worse. I don't know, one of the two. But Drax Night Out. Uh, it, it's, and instead of climbing up the ladders like you would at Donkey Kong, you have to go down. You have to go down the castle. Interesting. You have a fighting game called Exploding Fist for your NES. 
Well, it plays a lot like a Karate Champ. If you're a big fan of Karate Champ, it plays a lot like Karate Champ. Same idea too, where you hold the button down and then depending on which deep, uh, direction you push on the D-pad, it does a different maneuver, whether it be a jump, a kick, a punch, a high kick, roundhouse kick, whatever the case is. I could have seen this being something kind of interesting. I mean, we had Karate Champ. I could have seen this being just Karate Champ 2. Um, didn't come out though, so, hmm, interesting. Well, Happily Ever After is a game that was based on the animated um, feature. And this one, you know what? is actually not that bad. I mean, the hit is really weird. Like, you, you twirl your cape around, and that's how you uh, defeat enemies, but you don't really attack forward. You know, it is, you almost have to wait till like, you're basically running in through them to hit the button uh, to defeat your enemies and all that. And that feature's a little, um, you know, you can use items. You just spin around, and hey, there's a flower. It becomes a new platform. <laughs> on this game. Um, I remember seeing this in magazines. I believe this one was, was available for like the Super Nintendo, but uh, here's the NES version of, um, of this game where you play as uh, Snow White. Features cutscenes and everything. Gotta love that. Now, Tingen had a few games that they announced that they never released, including License to Kill, which was a James Bond game. The Police Academy animated series was gonna be a game, Zybots as well. And then this game here is your hard driving. Yeah, a hard driving game <laughs> for the NES which up front doesn't look terrible. I mean, it looks kind of like what hard driving looked like anyway, as far as uh, polygons go. Uh, pretty rough though. I mean, I mean, I think hard driving is kind of a rough game to begin with. Um, put it on the NES, man, even rougher. <laughs> that makes sense. Well, Hero Quest just made sense. It was such a popular board game, such a popular game in and of itself. And to put the popular board game on a Nintendo cartridge, I mean, that's just, you're printing money at that point. Now, to be completely honest, I'm not familiar with the board game. I'm familiar with its existence. I just haven't played the game. But this game has a lot, uh, a lot, a lot of depth. A lot of things you can do, looks like. A lot of, uh, a lot of options in this game. Like, you know, what kind of scenario you want to play, uh, where you want to go, how you do, how you go about what you're doing. I could have seen this game done very well to the people who are into games like this. Um, sad that it didn't come out officially. How's that for a cutscene, right? This is Secret Ties from Vic Tokai. A lot of people call this kind of like a Golgo 13 part three. I don't think it's really Golgo 13. Although the dude looks just like Duke Togo, not quite the same. I mean, he would never apologize first and foremost, right? He would just probably look at him and give him the dot, dot, dot. <laughs> but plays like kind of a platformy action style game. You can punch and kick and you can actually climb up the walls a little bit too. I could have seen this game done something pretty cool. Secret Ties, pretty cool. Super excited this was finally dumped. Sim City for the NES. There was a great chance we would have never seen this game um, outside of the magazines and the little featurettes that they've had. Uh, but fortunately, um, a couple of prototypes were found and one of them went to the right source that was able to dump the game. And here we go. We have uh, SimCity now on the NES. Now, I'm best familiar with SimCity for the Super Nintendo. And of course, the Super Nintendo version just plays better overall. I mean, it's Super Nintendo compared to NES. Cool to see it on the NES, though. And, um, and if you like SimCity, you're going to like the NES version. It, it still plays very, very well. Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. This came out in 1989, and for 1989, visually impressive, I think. Now, if this would have come out officially, I could have seen this game have done very well. Now, uh, this game, along with the other games, I don't know exactly how far along in production they were. If they were like, if they were final, if they're just fixing up a couple of things. A couple of uh, games on this list are missing maybe a couple of elements because they're not like the 100% final version, and I think this may have been that case too. But it's fun to see a Star Trek game. This first level, you actually play as Sulu in a red shirt, so <laughs> whatever that's worth. Would have been interested to see what else they would have done with this game. Uh, however, it's cool to have a Star Trek V game. Again, back in 1989, this is 1989 style. Um, and this looks great for 1989 Nintendo games, so I'm, I'm sorry that this never came out. Now, this is Sun Man from Sunsoft which would have been the Superman game. Uh, from what I understand, that you couldn't get the Superman license or something, so they just changed up the graphics and then, you know, we're, we're going to have just a Superman-like game without it being Superman. Makes sense for Sunsoft, because Sunsoft had DC, which had Batman. I could have seen this game be popular just like the Batman game was popular. Uh, it plays extremely well. It plays really good. I mean, I think the graphics are great. Uh, I think the action is fun. I think the levels are fun, you know, um, you know, creative. And just the fact that you play as Sun Man, but not Superman. I mean, that's, come on. You can still use your imagination. And yeah, it's still Superman through and through. But, you know, what are you gonna do? Here's Sun Man, never officially released. Um, I don't know why not. I mean, I think it would have been, I think it would have sold well enough as, 
as Sunman. It was the same story as Journey to Silius that was supposed to be the Terminator game, but couldn't get the Terminator whatever deal, so it just turned into Journey to Silius. Well, they couldn't get the Superman thing, so here we go, Sunman, perfect. Time Driver Eon Man from Taito. 1993, this would have been a late NES release. I could have seen this a lot like a Little Samson, which was also a late NES release. Um, had this game been officially released, I could have, I could see this game going for the $200, $300, $400 dollar mark as far as today's collectors go. Uh, however, it was never officially released, but we are able to play the ROM, and uh, it's actually very, very good. It's like a very good NES game. Um, if you're not familiar with it or you haven't played it or you're just, you're just getting into prototypes and lost NES games and stuff like that, this plays like a great game. It plays like a game that maybe you would have missed out on back in the day because it was a late release. Um, super fun though, and I, I definitely recommend checking this one out. This is the WCW game. Uh, back when NWA was turning to WCW, it went kind of like on you know, a couple of official paperwork things and uh, nothing really from there. Love the fact that it was a wrestling game that was lost, then found um, from Art of Nintendo Power. Stefan found it, um, had, the dump, uh, had the ROM dumped, so everyone's able to check it out now. It's a wrestling game featuring Bobby Eaton, who's never really been in a wrestling game before, and would have been in one back in the day. It also has the Road Warriors, uh, it has Ric Flair, it has Sting, you know, some other wrestlers in there too. Very cool to check out. It looks like WCW from um, FCI. It plays a lot more like pro wrestling from Nintendo, right? So even though it looks, it kind of has that same look of WCW wrestling, um, the control method is more like pro wrestling. Um, it's a decent wrestling game. As far as, I mean, NES wrestling games have never been the best, but it plays, it plays pretty well. It plays a lot better than all the WWF games, I'll tell you that. War on Wheels from Jalico uh, is, um, is your roller derby game. If you're into roller derby, here's your roller derby game. This one could have been fun. This one could have been a fun two-player game. Uh, could have seen that happen. I'm sure there's more to it than what you're seeing on the screen. Like, I'm just I'm just skating around and you can attack the other players. I'm sure there's more to it than this, but, you know. Hey, roller derby, why not? War on wheels. Check it out. Those are just a few. There are so many other unreleased Nintendo games out there, and still so many more Nintendo games that haven't been found yet. Still looking for Police Academy, the animated series from Tengen, uh, Ultimate Journey, which looked like a fantastic game. I would love to see Ultimate Journey. There's so many great games out there. Let me know. I can dump the ROM for you. I have the tools and technology over here. I can dump ROMs if needed. So let me know about that. I thank you for watching. There's so much more videos coming up. I do at least two videos a week. Make sure you're subscribed. And who knows, maybe we'll do another one of these for Super Nintendo games or something like that later on. We'll see.